So hello everybody, my name is Tal, and I'm going to lecture about, present about how to, not to give a bad presentation. And I'm going to show you an approach, not a method, not a step-by-step -step guide, but an approach. And McKinsey said that presentation is the killer skill you take into the real world. It's an unfair advantage. And McKinsey were right. McKinsey is a big company which makes billions of dollars, and they almost sell nothing. They sell nothing physical. They sell words and ideas. I'm going to tell a quick story. This presentation is taken from the last semester. This, is what, this was my final project in a communication in English. And I've presented this presentation to the class. I was the first one. And I got a very good reaction in it. So that's why I decided to present it in front of you. I hope you'll gain something from this. By, by the way, is this a good presentation or a bad one? <laughs> the presentation or the presentation? <laughs> Real picture, by the way, this is me from the left. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Bad. But the question that I want to ask is, why does it matter? Why does it matter to us good presentation, bad presentation? Because and the question is, it all matters. We all want to be some kind of leaders. Maybe not our CEOs, not our vice presidents in companies, but some kind of a leader in our own field. And if you want to become one, you must know how to communicate, you must know how to present. But we have a problem, right? If you saw a bad presentation before, you've all heard about the, the phenomenon called death by PowerPoint. And now I want to ask you a question. Try to, try to remember the bad or the worst presentation that you've seen, and just give me the reasons what you think made them best or worst presentation that you saw. Yes? Um, a lot of text. Is, a lot, is this a good one or a bad a one? Bad one. A lot of text is a bad one. Yep. A lot of content in the slide. Yeah. Okay, another one? Yes. The person not facing the audience. The person, yeah, the person is reading from the like side. Losing from the side, or yeah. just like reading from his notes, but yeah. never really facing the audience. This is actually a very significant one. Yes. Unfamiliar terms. Unfamiliar terms, yeah, of course. If you're a high-tech uh, teacher and you're speaking in the terms of high-tech, people won't understand you. Yeah. And also, if well, you if yeah if you're too serious and you know make a little bit of jokes and smile, so it's also okay. So we want to joke. Okay, okay. So Gai Kawasaki said that 95 percent of the presentations suck. <laughs> and Gai Kawasaki is a big entrepreneur. He's a big advisor to Apple company and to HP company. And the reason <coughs> why he meant why presentation, excuse me, sucks, suck is because we can't read and listen at the same time. What do I mean by that? Studies show that we can get visual information and verbal information and understand it together. We just cannot do it. Studies show that. So what we want is simple presentation, simple message. We want to have a meaning to our presentation and of course great content. content. But what we get instead, we don't want stuff like this. Let me show you. By the way, this is a big Bill Gates. Yeah. This was the early days of Microsoft. Let me give you another example. Now, I wonder where they got inspired about the design, maybe from the Cheerios, uh, <laughs> you know. Do you familiar with the Cheerios thing? Cornflakes. Yeah. Flakes. <laughs> you know what is cornflakes, right? Cereals, <laughs> <laughs> cereals. Okay, cereal. okay let's, continue. Cereal, yeah, let's continue. Let's continue. So we do one stuff like this. This is, by the way, Steve Jobs. As you can see, sometimes you can think that this is boring presentations, black image, his, he wears all black jeans, but he gets the message to the audience, and his audience is tech guys, engineer guys, science people, and you, you immediately understand his message. Let me show you the difference between them. You immediately understand what he wants to say while presenting. I don't know if you all know what is this. Most of us are Windows users, by the way. By the way. So, our I, Albert Einstein said that, that Everything should be made as simple, as simple as possible, but not as simple. But, and what we need is three things. We need preparation, we need design, and we need, of course, the delivery part. Let's start with preparation. Now, you must never start, op start your presentation uh, opening the PowerPoint. You should always start with a spreadsheet. This is, by the way, actual spreadsheet. I took a picture before for working for this kind of presentation. You can see never give up the best presentation. You can see it right there. This is how this presentation was made of. There is a simple rule which says that it takes one hour of presentation for each minute of presentation time. And 
representing for 10 minutes. Do the math. No design. No design. Design is, a, design is not a decoration. I'm not a designer. I don't know Photoshop. But design is, is, is how to make our presentation look and feel. And let me show you an example. Of course, one more quote. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. This was said by Leonardo da Vinci. And what, what, it, what he actually me meant is that we should keep it simple. We should sometimes subtract and not to add to our slides. Let me give you an example. Have you heard about the Harahachibu method, guys? <laughs> <laughs> the Harahachibu method is a Japanese method which said that you only need to eat until 80%. Now stop, guys, stop. You're reading the slide. I don't want you to read on my slide. I want you to listen, to, to focus on me. Now, as you can see, all the bullets, all the references for the Wikipedia page, this is stuff we don't want to use. Let me show an example how can I deliver the idea of the Harahachibu method in a better way, in a simple way. Now, let me stand here. Now, the Harahachibu method is a Japanese method which says that you only eat until you're 80% full. That's it. The message is delivered. That's it. That's all you need. Last but not least, bullet skill. Have you heard about the 177 rule? This is, by the way, a rhetorical question. The 177 rule says that you should always put only one idea to the slide, maximum of seven bullets, maximum of seven words per, per bullet. If I follow this rule, by the way, this is a, some kind of a default rule for presentation, it would look like this. Bunch of information, boring information. No, imagine I would read the, all the slide, all, all the bullets. That a PowerPoint. That's what I meant. The first delivery. Delivery is the most important thing. Delivery is how you will be able to. Is, is knowing your stuff. Is not reading from the slides, as you said. Is practicing beforehand. And it should be about you. The present the presentation is about you, not about my slides. My slides contain maybe two words per slide, that's it. Because the presentation is about the presenter, not about the PowerPoint presentation. This was said by Steve Jobs, by the way. Of course, it takes time, but isn't the audience worth it? So how to improve, you ask yourself. Well, how to improve? First of all, read and study the stuff. There are a lot of books. If you want to reference, I'll give you the links. There are a lot of YouTube channels. There are a lot of uh, uh, DVDs, which you can download legally. And of course, present. Volunteer to present in your other courses. Volunteer to present here for 10 minutes, getting out of your comfort zone. And this is the most important slide, getting out of your comfort zone. If I want to deliver you one idea, I want it to be this idea. Get out of your comfort zone. Learning occurs when you're getting out of your comfort zone. This is the most important message that I'm saying here. And what I mean is, Take an English class if you don't know English. Take a, an art class if you are an engineer. Take an engi a science class if you are, I don't know, an architecture student. Go to Israel if you are not an Israeli citizen. This is getting out of your comfort zone. So what's the conclusion? Well, the conclusion, that there is no conclusion. There is only the next step. And for those of you who will present next time with digital tools like PowerPoint, like stuff like that, I hope you learn something from this and I hope you'll, you'll use some of the guidelines that you saw and that's it thank you very much there's a foundation in the world right